around around the woods today and this is a video review that I promised a couple weeks ago <clears throat> if you remember correctly I did a video on unboxing the Kephart BK62 Becker knife and I did that um, from the basement and you know of course the basement review is not that great it's just an unboxing you just can look at it and we talk about it a little bit but today we're out in the woods so hopefully uh, we can process some wood, carve with it a little bit, baton it, do all that stuff that you normally do with a woods knife, and just see how it performs, how it feels in the hand, and I'll give you my impressions and thoughts on it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So here's the knife, if you remember it correctly. It is a replica or a representation, I should say, of uh, the Horace Kephart knife. And it's produced by um, K Bar and Becker Knives. And it's the BK62 is the designation for this particular model. See right there, BK62, Horace Kephart. Now, my first impressions of when I unboxed this knife when I played with it a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago is that I liked how comfortable it was in the hand. It seemed very, like a very comfortable knife. The grip is not terribly thick. Um, it has a nice uh, upsweep to it here at the end, a little bit of a, uh, a guard almost built into the grip so your hand naturally stops there. But the grip is not too thick. And um, my, my paws are, eh, I don't know, they're not huge, but uh, they're not small either. So um, I like a knife that uh, fills my hand and, uh, you know, gives me good grip. That's what I'm looking for. And so far, just handling it uh, without doing any chores with it, it seems to handle that pretty well. So the first thing I think we want to do is... <clears throat> really want to process some wood down um, and get into maybe some feather sticks with this thing.
one thing that I talked about when last time I looked at this knife was that the spine is not sharp. It's not a 90 degree spine. And that's a little bit problematic for a bushcraft knife because of course you can't spark a ferro rod with it. Uh, you can't do very good wood scrapings with it on uh, to get fuzz sticks. And it doesn't even really do anything when I try it there. It just just mashes it up because the spine, if you can see that, they really ground it down, um, beveled it on both sides. So there's no sharpness to it at all. And I suspect they did that because A, probably it's maybe, and I'm not sure of this, but I think it may be more faithful to the original knife that, of course, Kephart carried. I'm sure his wasn't 90 degree spine. Uh, maybe it was, I don't know. <clears throat> um, but they also done it to, uh, to facilitate you know, choking up on the knife, putting your thumb all over the top of the blade for control. So like when you're doing carving, I can get in there with both my thumbs and I'm not, I'm not bleeding when I'm done. Sometimes you can't do that because of the spine is so sharp. Um, that's just something you have to be aware of when you're going to buy this knife. It's like, is that going to be, is that going to be something that, uh, you can handle not having that 90 degree spine. Now I'm just doing some real basic push cuts with this thing, nothing major. Just kind of digging into the wood, creating a V notch. digging that out and it's very comfortable in the hand it's very comfortable on the spine so maybe this is a good knife to, uh, to choose for carving I certainly think this knife would be an excellent choice as a general camp knife where you may be doing uh, wood processing but also doing meat processing um, I don't do a lot of hunting anymore, but um, you can kind of, kind of tell by the shape of this knife and the length of the blade that's going to probably be a pretty good slicer for meat um, and for carving up uh, game. basic carving it seems to do just fine. Uh, sharpness of the blade seems to be pretty good with the feather sticks. I showed you that. Um, it does nice curls and this is this is pretty hard wood. This is not soft wood. This is not pine or anything like that. This is probably either maple or oak. Um, that's about all that's out here right now in these neck of the woods. Spongy wood. The other thing I liked about this knife was the sheath. I think the sheath's really well made. Um, it's definitely solid. Knife's not coming out. It's got stitching as well as rivets. Three of them right there. Four actually. Nice wood handle, heavy duty hardware. I 
think the only lacking thing on the sheath is of course it doesn't have a dangler it needs some kind of hardware that you can attach a dangler to but you can buy aftermarket danglers or make one yourself it's not a big deal but i think that's what it needs is a dangler so it can hang uh, a little bit lower on my belt line <clears throat> it's a little too high right now in my opinion but uh definitely i think for the money which is like 114 dollars this knife and new in the box it's not a bad purchase at all um on the last video i did someone commented that i said it was the ugliest knife they've ever seen and uh that may be true it's it's not the most attractive blade in the world but i think it's it serves a utilitarian purpose and that's what a knife is supposed to be for it's not supposed to be something that's elegant and beautiful all the time some knives are <clears throat> some knives are not some knives are just meant to be used and abused and i think this is one of those knives this is definitely a woods knife um it's very comfortable in the hand i enjoyed using it for sure All right, everybody, that's the video for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, please like, subscribe, and share. Make sure you check out the Facebook group. It is growing. We have well over 1,000 members right now. Uh, it's getting big. Link's down below. Also, check out my Instagram uh, for more photos from today's shoot. And uh, that's it. We'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer. Stay safe.